So we were thrilled for this chance to come in and not only to see what's being done, but talk to the artisans and those who've been such a part of this restoration. Incredible. It's beauty, instant beauty before your very eyes. I think everybody will be overwhelmed at what's happened here. It's amazing. The first ever closing of St. Michael's Cathedral over a period of six months in 2015 was both historic and necessary to address structural issues. But before it would open its doors once again, the Archdiocese decided to allow a sneak peek into the painstaking and ongoing restoration of this beautiful house of worship. A three-day open house would give parishioners and the general public an up-close and personal introduction to the incredible works of art being incorporated into the newly restored building, as well as unprecedented access to the artists themselves to learn firsthand what has inspired and motivated their artistry and witness the passion that has driven each of their projects. The um, idea came from a visit I had at Traditional Cut Stone where I had taken a parishioner in from St. Michael's Cathedral and as the parishioners were walking around Traditional Cut Stone they wanted to donate immediately to the item and to the article because they actually saw the sculptor working on it. And then a little while later Father Michael and I decided that perhaps it would be best if we actually brought the artists, their work and their artisan efforts to the cathedral and opened up the cathedral to the community so that they could be part of the restoration efforts as we come down the last stretch to finish the interiors inside the cathedral. At last, after a lengthy closure, Parishioners and visitors are able to walk into the nave of St. Michael's Cathedral once again. On behalf of His Eminence, Cardinal Collins, I welcome you to St. Michael's Cathedral and to this evening of art, architecture, and music. We have reached another milestone in the restoration of St. Michael's. The heavy construction work on the cathedral and the improvements to its structure are almost complete. And I want to thank the many trades that have brought us this far. Their innovative solutions to the many challenges that this 168 year old building presented will ensure that it will still be here 100 years from now. Now the beauty which adorns our cathedral does not just come from the visual. We are indeed blessed to share in the gifts and talents of the world-renowned St. Michael's Choir School. They would like to share with us now some of their unique artistic talents. This is an amazing place. This is holy ground in which we are gathered. It is a place of welcome to one and all. I remember a few years ago, when before we began this uh, work on the cathedral, that a visiting cardinal from Europe came in to pray before the Blessed Sacrament, spend a few moments in prayer. He said to me, you know, you have an amazing cathedral here. Because he noticed that at that time, in the middle of an afternoon on a regular day, there were lots of people here in prayer, going to confession, finding a little peace in the soul and the heart. And that's what this wonderful cathedral offers. I want to express my deep appreciation to all who through their generosity have made this possible and continue to do so as we're trying to, to we're bringing it to completion and that will happen, I trust, on the Feast of St. Michael. September 29th of next year. I often think when reflecting on this, this holy place, the story I think many of us have heard, but it's worth telling again. In the Middle Ages, 
in the yard in front of a cathedral that was being built. Three workers were chipping away at stone. And when asked, what are you doing? The first said, I'm chipping at a stone. And the second said, I'm building an arch. And the third was doing exactly the same work. And he said, I'm building a cathedral. Here it is. So beautiful. God bless you. I've said wow 10,000 times today. It's incredible. It really is. Uh, it's overwhelming to be honest with you. To be part of this uh, whole process and, and to be a little small part of it, it's, it's fantastic. Today we brought a couple things, uh, as you see, from some of the original uh, wood carvings that we've highlighted with gold leaf. Some of the Gothic in the back, you'll see some of the Gothic statues uh, from 1840 that are being restored. Um, and then the process coming around to um, supplying some of the new statuary that's going to be in the, sta in, in the cathedral. And we hope to uh, put everything in, into place uh, into the middle of August of 2016. It's a beautiful structure, a beautiful building that uh, needed a lot of work and we've had true professionals working with us all the way through it. So we had a lot of work to do to get this place just habitable and I think we've gone beyond habitable and made it illustrious and glorious and something to be proud of. Well, how far are we now? We have three like, windows left to remove. Three windows left to remove. So Five to total to build. Well, yeah. um, yeah, so we're working hard. Some of the parishioners who've been kind of uh, displaced by the work, uh, they're here and they're, they're really delighted to see what's going on and I think they've been impressed by it. So they've been very patient with all of us. So And lots to, um, of questions. Both of us were talking non-stop the whole time. It was like we'd finish one and then the next person, excuse me, excuse me. So people are fascinated by it. And when the sun comes in through these windows, it's going to be something, uh, something special, all right? Tonight was very, very special to us because we had an opportunity to actually get some feedback. It's been a long journey on this and at times we would take one step forward only to take two steps back. And for us it was really instrumental to have them come out and see what's been going on and, and let them see it firsthand. And you could see the passion, you could see the intensity and you could see how they were mesmerized tonight by all the various stations. And we were moved to see their reaction and have their input. It, for us, it meant a great deal tonight. I'm getting a lot of feedback by people who have been uh, coming here. One lady in particular said she's been coming here three times a week since 1964. She was in awe of everything. And it's just, it gives you a, a, an inkling of just how much this place means to the people of Toronto. For a stone carving company, and a lover of art, it's, this is like really a once in a lifetime opportunity. I mean, not just the exterior restoration and the floor, but my uh, business partner Lawrence is the master carver. This is his masterpiece, the, the Pieta, which is just uh, fantastic. It's going to be carved out of a 10 ton block of marble. It will weigh four times when it's completed, and it's going to be sitting on top of the tomb of the Loretto sisters, who are the main subjects love, hope, and sorrow. First time uh, when I brought the Pieta here, I, I keep a, you know, like a simple drapes just to, I didn't know when I can uncover and somebody asked just to take the, you know, he can take a peek. The guy was with tears in his eyes and that's, that's what I want to, to talk about with my piece to the people, you know, to have that uh, message, I would say, you know. very pleasantly surprised and even astounded at some of the comments I had that how people were sensitive to some of the things that we've done and how they perceived them so quickly. But one woman told me, you know, I've been sitting here for half an hour and I'm trying to see if there's a star at a place and I can't find one. So very good. <laughs> so long as it looks right to you, that's all we need. I love being able to speak to the actual parishioners because at the end of the day we are doing this for them. This project is really only possible because of the parishioners and their faith and the money they have always donated to their church. So I love being able to hear, and I'm frankly really humbled by it, to hear them come and say how much they appreciate what we've done and how much they like it. 
the most common question is why blue with gold stars? So it's always very nice to tell them not only of the tradition of the Gothic revival, but Father Michael's vision to bring it back to what the cathedral originally was. You, you tend to forget that these people never saw that ceiling or probably even knew about it, that it used to be a blue ceiling with gold stars. So it's always nice to be able to inform people about that and they really love hearing it. So. I heard about it on the radio yesterday and I said I've got to get down there and to have the craftsmen here to show us how, how they work and what they do, this has been a really great idea. The feeling of creation and seeing the accomplished product, as I spoke to one artisan, he said it's bittersweet because it will be sad to leave such a beautiful project when it's completed in September. Today I felt really wonderful was the ownership that people were taking of this place and I was so overwhelmed by everything I saw. It was awesome. Just looking at some of the videos and seeing the, the expressions on the craftsmen's faces when they were doing some of the work, you know, it, it, just, it must be wonderful to have that kind of ability to, to, use, your, to use your passion and to use your craft and to produce something. It, it, the satisfaction must be fantastic. Many of the people that were here tonight seem to be parishioners of the cathedral and uh, they're very uh, forthright in their praise. You know, people are honestly, genuinely thrilled to be here. I'm shaking my head sometimes, still surprised that everything actually worked out, and I am here, and that the work has been suitably received. It felt great. It was a great night. Oh, I think people are just awestruck when they walk in, in terms of the airiness and how light it is, and you know, the, the high quality of work that's being done. Uh, there's an overall vision of uh, how it should all look and, uh, you know, take the cathedral many, 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 many years into the future without uh, anything else needing to be done. I am from Ireland originally. I'm very proud to be Irish today when I read what Bishop Power did for Toronto and for St. Michael's Cathedral. I love what's being done to restore it. I think we are very, very lucky to have such a beautiful cathedral in our city. It's come a long way, and I'm glad to see that the work that really needed to be done uh, is being done. It's a chance to engage the public, to engage the parishioners who, at this point, have been saying, hey, where's all the money going? When do I get a chance to get back in the cathedral? What the heck is going on? Now they're able to come in, they're seeing the magnitude of what's going on. It's setting up an expectation of what's yet to come. And there's a whole buzz in the air. And uh, it's just really setting us up for September of 2016 when the interior is going to be finished. I think that the break in the construction schedule uh, is a really good thing. I feel like it's a gift to the team from the Archdiocese. And what I think this event has done is really it's, it's galvanized the team. There's always uh, challenges in construction and we're, we're just gonna work together to solve them. I think the common thread on the project is all of us are so appreciative of the fact that we've been given the opportunity to be a cathedral builder of today, that everybody is passionate about their work. This one takes on a different dimension also because we're building a house for God. It is important for the public to see the cathedral at this stage we're on our way towards completion, which we hope for on the Feast of St. Michael next year, it's September 29th. But this gives people a sense of where we're at, and in itself it's inspiring, but it will be even more so when it uh, helps them to see uh, the direction we're going, and that they know that we are being faithful to their trust. I was so concerned about our people being cut off from their cathedral. So many people were sort of forgetting what it was like, forgetting what was being done here that we needed an opportunity for them to come in and see it again. They knew the place was falling apart. They knew it was not as clean as it could have been, that the things were deteriorating. They loved it anyway. <laughs> but now they said, this is like a whole new start for everybody. It feels welcoming, it feels more hospitable, they feel like they've been included. It's a good start for the renovation of the people as well as the building. And they said, now that when they come, they'll know who it is who put that there and who they were. That's, that's a big part of you know, the spiritual life of this place. Yeah, I really feel like Bishop Power has been a motivating force in all of this. 
right from the beginning. When I came back as director, I really said this is what I was sent to do, was to get this thing back in shape. And I feel like he's with me, helping me make decisions, because he never saw it finished. He never saw it. It's magnificent when you see the tremendous uh, beauty that's here. And this leads people to truth and goodness. It's uh, beauty, truth, and goodness are the, the heart of it all. St. Michael's Cathedral has been a visible sign of the faith for 160 years. It was built to be far more than just a permanent seat for the bishop. It is a testament to the faith of the people and a powerful reminder of the presence of the Catholic community in Toronto. It is not just another parish church. It is the center and focus of worship for the entire Archdiocese of Toronto. It reflects the sacrifices and struggles of those faithful Catholic pioneers that are laid to rest in its very foundations. St. Michael's Cathedral remains a powerful symbol for many Catholic faithful today. As rector, it is my responsibility to make sure this restoration project not only reflects the vision of our current Archbishop, Thomas Cardinal Collins, but that St. Michael's Cathedral remains a living and vibrant presence of the Catholic faith, a presence that is revealed in the cathedral's art which is meant to inspire and teach the faith we hold so dear. A church is more than just a collection of bricks and mortar. Its art and decoration should speak of our love of God from whom all the gifts of creation flow. The stained glass windows, the statuary, the paintings and the furnishings should instruct and inspire us in the many ways of living our Christian life. A church building is a visible sign of faith, a place where our history as God's people is honored and where our present Christian story is told. As you discover the new decorative designs, you may see something that speaks to you personally and to your faith. Perhaps you would like to donate a statue, a shield, or some other work of sacred art in memory of your family or departed loved one. Your loved one's name and your name will be recorded in our archives and, where possible, placed somewhere on the donated item or on a plaque that will be hung in the public areas of St. Michael's Cathedral. So many people have already been very generous to the Archdiocese. Your gifts have been instrumental in restoring the infrastructure of St. Michael's Cathedral. I hope that you will also consider a more personal gift, one that speaks of your own devotion and commitment to inspire and enhance the faith of all those who come to worship here.